Hello and welcome to a new episode of Airport CEO, where we have a big day here at the airport because we will officially open Terminal 2. Now, since the last episode, I have been doing a little bit of work off camera. Uh, one of the things that I have been doing is I've actually finished up all the different shops that we have throughout the airport. So they're all ready now to be uh, given contracts with all sorts of companies. I've also done more extensive testing of the terminal, having aircraft coming in and out to see if there's something that isn't really fully working. Now, I'm not guaranteeing that everything is perfect at the moment, but it should be running fairly smoothly. Now, operations over at Terminal 1 are running their course that has been going on for quite some time, and I'm confident to say that Terminal 1 really does work and there really isn't any issues over here. Of course, at some point we will actually refurbish the uh, terminal a little bit and even extend it, but that will come in a future episode. What is, of course, um, the reason why I want to, for example, now add all these contracts to the shops before we start having traffic at Terminal 2 is because um, I want the shops to be open when passengers arrive so they can start spending money. I don't want them to arrive and then first have to open the shops and, um, yeah, to lose out on potential customers. Of course, these shops can be really lucrative. So if the airport was running on a budget, which it currently isn't, um, down to the fact that, of course, the whole um, money system in, this, in the game is still broken. Uh, but if it would be working, then these shops would really be... Um, I wouldn't say the main income source for the airport, but would definitely be a very important one. So um, yeah, it, it really um, it really is a lucrative thing to make the shops at your airport. Now I normally praise this game for running really smoothly, and it's it's fairly rare that we actually have bugs. But I have actually come across a few small bugs in the game uh, during this gameplay. One of them was actually when I tried to sign contracts for shops that the sign button wasn't available. Now normally that would be because um, you're not fulfilling all requirements for the shop that you are selecting. But in this case, um, that wasn't the case because I was fulfilling all requirements. Uh, if I selected a specific shop and I wanted to sign the contract, the sign button wouldn't be available. If I then selected the same shop once again, it would mostly become available. Sometimes I would have to select the shop multiple times before the button would become um, available, the sign button. So that was a bit strange. Another thing that I noticed, which was the next thing I had to do before we of course could open Terminal 2, was actually to make a flight schedule because obviously without a schedule, you won't have any aircraft coming into your airport. And uh, here, what I noticed was that if I selected a flight and dragged it to the, um, the flight planner, sometimes the flight would simply disappear. Now, it wouldn't just jump back to the list of available flights, it would just simply disappear. And it was even more inconsistent because sometimes I could then to the same place on the flight schedule drag another flight and it would apply and sometimes it wouldn't. So that was a bit strange and I've actually noticed it for a few days um, because I've been recording this gameplay of course ahead of time and I have actually been recording a few episodes now and ahead of time so that I'm sure that I have it ready for you guys in the coming weeks. And this issue seems to be persistent and it's a little bit strange. I haven't really noticed a pattern when it happens or why it will happen, but it does occur every now and then. I don't know if you guys have come across that issue where your flights and your flight planner, you want to apply a new flight, you want to add a new flight and um, the flight simply disappears. And then you aren't able to put a flight in the same spot. And sometimes you are. It's a bit of a strange one, but um, yeah. Those were two issues that I came across uh, when I was doing a recording of this gameplay. Now, after having added the flights to the flight planner from the airlines that we have already signed a contract with, it is of course time to add even more airlines because we have the space for it now. So let's select airlines here and let's see what we have. There have been a few suggestions from you guys. 
Um, one of them was Swiss International Airlines, so we will definitely sign that one. There was also a few episodes ago someone who suggested Thomas Cook. I will not be adding Thomas Cook because the airline doesn't exist anymore and I would like the traffic here to be fairly realistic, which also means that at some point um, we will actually remove all the generic airlines from the gameplay. Let's see here. EasyJet, that's a good one. We definitely want EasyJet and I think we have multiple ones of them. Um, and uh, yeah, all the airlines that I was selecting here, um, obviously you can see now which ones we are going for here, Turkish Airlines, for example. But if I'm leaving anyone out here where you think, oh, I really want that one, um, feel free to suggest it. I won't be able to add it in the next couple of videos um, because I've already recorded them. <laughs> but, uh, but of course, we will add them. Uh, at some point so your suggestions i won't forget them and uh, if they in any way work with the airport i will definitely add them uh, here is the other easy jet um that we have we even have a third one but i think for now we will just will go with easy jet europe and easy jet uk um let's see toy fly maybe um swiss that was the one that was suggested so we will definitely add that one it will also fit really perfectly here with the uh airport so let's see we have many really awesome airlines here red wings i don't know if that is don't is that even a real airline well anyway um we even have another <laughs> sas but uh, yeah lufthansa we definitely need those um, I think that pack actually comes with both the old and the new livery, so that's really awesome. Uh, Brussels Airlines, that's definitely also one that we want to have. Let's see. Oh, I even have the new Swiss airline, CH Air or Chair. <laughs> A really strange name, honestly speaking. I know the CH is for Switzerland and all that stuff, but when you put it together like that... Well, anyway, um, our France, uh, Norwegian, we already have, so I don't think we really need more flights of those. Um, KLM, of course, that's a good one to have. Uh, let's see, what could we add? We have we have quite a few. Um, we do have quite a few. Also, of course, we need to be a little bit careful here not to add too many at once, because we also need to add them into the schedule and see, um, not to overload it, but um, I think at the uh, one or two episodes uh, in the future, we will add more airlines for sure because that's when we have the um, when we will work on an extension to Terminal One. So then we will have more space even. So after having added uh, uh, or signed contracts with a bunch of new airlines here for the airport, it is of course time to also add flights to the schedule as we still have plenty of space for all these new airlines. Now, sometimes, of course, when you uh, sign a contract with an airline, it does take a couple of minutes before they actually have any available flights. Or sometimes you also uh, can be lucky and uh, are available flights right away. I don't know. I don't know really what the game logic behind that is. Um, when you have uh, airlines where flights are available immediately and where you don't have them av available immediately. Uh, but most of the time, if you just keep on playing for a few minutes, do something else um, and then come back to the flight planner, then normally you will have flights available with pretty much all airlines that you um, want to sign with or have signed with, but want to add to your flight schedule. Now, one of you uh, viewers is particularly great when it comes to commenting, suggesting things or explaining uh, things in the game. And I have to apologize because I, I keep forgetting to note down the name of you. Um, but I'm pretty sure you know who you are. Uh, you also gave me a great tip about the flight scheduler. Basically avoid the auto scheduler because uh, it messes you up because it will just stack all the flights at the same time. And uh, it really, uh, yeah, it really messes your airport up. So, of course, here we will try, as we're making it all manual, to add enough space between flights so that we are sure not to overload our airport, but still to have a good flow of aircraft coming in and going out. Uh, yeah, really apologies that I, I keep forgetting your name. Uh, uh, <laughs> I really shouldn't mention you at some point because you have actually been um, really awesome with great comments uh, throughout the series. So, yeah, apologies for that. 
but um, I guess we all profit from your wisdom, uh, <laughs> especially with the flight planner here and having an airport therefore running smoothly. Uh, one thing I will also try to work on is actually that I want to uh, split up the traffic a little bit. So most airlines will obviously operate from Terminal 2, but a few airlines I would like to try at least to exclusively operate from Terminal 1. One of them would be Ryanair and for example Wizz Air. And um, I might add some other airlines to Terminal 1 as well. Um, and obviously I can do that because we can rename the gates, uh, which helps out then in the flight schedule because then I know where we are. For example, I, have, I don't know if you can see that here, but I've actually renamed all the gates at Terminal 2 so that I can see it in the scheduler uh, which are gates I'm assigning flights to and therefore I can distinguish whether I put a flight to Terminal 1 or Terminal 2. That's also a great thing that you can do if you um, yeah, want to have a better overview of things that you're doing at the airport. Rename stuff so that when you have to look through the list you can better identify where what is. So now that we have done our schedule for the next few days, there are one or two small things I need to fix here in the terminal before we start operations. One of the things I've noticed here is actually that I've kind of um, messed up this part here in the middle of the departure hall. Um, I mean, it's not terrible, but one I've missed a little bit of the floor here and uh, we should also change the wall here slightly. But um, yeah, that's pretty much all I think we have to do here. Um, as I said, we have tested this with um, a bunch of lights coming in and that seemed to work rather well. Uh, of course, having the connection tunnel from Terminal 1 to Terminal 2, that was really a godsend because now finally uh, people can yeah, go from one side of the airport to the other side, which doesn't just include passengers, but also staff which was the main uh, reason I had issues with the security checks and simply not being uh, manned, even though I had plenty of security office officers, but they seemed all to arrive at Terminal 1 and then had no way of getting to Terminal 2. So that issue was solved with the tunnel. And uh, yeah, I think with that, we are ready to receive our first flight. And here it comes. I'm actually not sure which one I've put in to arrive as the first aircraft. Uh, let's see, it looks like a uh, Turkish Airlines, I think. Um, I guess it's an A319, might be a 20, it's a bit difficult to see here. No, does it have... what is it? Oh yeah, it is a 19. Alright, great. So that's our first arrival. Of course, the route that is indicated here makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. I, I really hope that at one point someone will, will make a mod, because I don't know if it's even possible for the game developers uh, to make a like a realistic route uh, pack, but a mod that would introduce realistic routing that would be amazing. Uh, that would be absolutely fantastic. I really hope that that is even possible. And if it was possible, that someone will do it at some point. Um, unfortunately, I have zero skills when it comes to stuff like that, so I'm a hundred percent dependent on other people's great work, which, for example, includes these uh, liveries of real airlines or the um, real uh, names of shops that we have at the airport. All that stuff is, of course, modded, um, which is absolutely awesome. Um, yeah, modding just makes any game better. Uh, every game developer should leave their games open so people can mod because, yeah, it just makes it so much better. But I can see we already have a few more flights come in here. I think that's a great Dane Airlines. And I do think I saw a Scandinavian Airlines coming past us uh, just a few seconds ago. The airport seems to be quite busy, but we have left enough space for everybody, so it's not overcrowded. That's a great thing. So this aircraft should actually be leaving, and it is. <laughs> awesome. I think even ahead of time, so that's superb. Absolutely fantastic. Ah, oh, an EasyJet is here as well, and uh, there is the Scandinavian. and Yeah, so that's really great. We know that now all the aircraft are coming in. Ah, oh, this one, hmm, strange. Why did it go to this side for the de-icing? Um, that's a bit weird because we have the two de-icing pads on the same side as Terminal 2, but it didn't go over there, but okay. Uh, Brussels Airlines at the airport as well. Ah, that looks really nice, doesn't it? I really do like that. The, the, the real live liveries to this game just makes the whole game just, I mean, the game is great. 
but with the real life liveries it's just even better yeah so i think the next thing we really need to do is now just simply taking a look at the different operations around the airport and just making sure that everything runs smoothly um yeah these routes <laughs> i mean these routes are just really strange but yeah uh, whatever uh just the fact that we have these airlines coming in now Air France, which unfortunately is, well, unfortunately, it's a retro livery, uh, but I haven't found a pack where we just have the standard livery. It's only this retro livery of Air France. It's nice, but it would be nice if it wasn't exclusively the retro livery, but okay. Anyway, it's better than uh, nothing, I guess. The new livery of Scandinavian Airlines, is that a banger or not? I'm not sure. I mean, I, I do quite like the livery. There's one detail that I really don't like, and that's how they've styled the flags. I really don't like that. I think it's... yeah. I mean, in the old livery, sure, it was a stylized version of the flags, but it was at least the whole flags. Now it's just a line. I, I don't like that. The rest of the livery I can live with. I don't like how they man managed to put the flags on the, on the aircraft. I should put them either in their f real form or a... I don't know, like like in the old livery, that was okay. Now this line, nah. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, I mean, if you have any thoughts about the new Scandinavian Airlines livery, then let me know. It does kind of look like the Lufthansa livery, which kind of looks looks like so many other liveries before. I mean, nowadays, most liveries just, they, they become more and more similar, which is kind of sad because it just, it, it loses its uniqueness. When all liveries look the same, I mean, what's the point? But anyway, that's just my thoughts on the whole livery situation with Scandinavian Airlines and in general. All right, now that we know that Terminal 2 is running really smoothly without any big problems, I want to work a little bit on Terminal 1. There are a few things I want to improve here in this episode already and already start a little bit of preparation for the um, refurbishment and expansion of Terminal 1. Uh, one of the things I want to do is actually we have this footpath here from Terminal 1 over to our tunnel, our passenger tunnel I would guess it's called, um, and actually I would think it would be nicer if people actually entered straight into the terminal building so they wouldn't have to go outside but could stay inside all the way. Um, the challenge here is a little bit that I don't want to interrupt the flow of people here um, so they should be able to walk um, between the terminals at all times just to make well just to make sure that we don't have any issues um, because as soon as I uh, break this connection oh my god there will be so many complaints so much stuff will say oh I can't do this I can't do that because people can't go from one side to the other so I want to avoid that at all costs so we will build basically half of this um, yeah connection building before we remove the footpath and only when we have that constructed we will then start removing the footpath and then uh, completing the building so that's the first thing we want to do the other thing we want to do is actually i already want to uh, have the uh, workers here start constructing um, an addition to terminal one which will in the future house the additional baggage belts that we will be needing because obviously um, the refurbishment of terminal one will basically consist in removing the small stands and replacing them with medium stands um, the reason i want to do that is simply because if i remove all the small stands at least for commercial flights i can remove all the um all the generic airlines from the game i mean i can already remove them now but then no aircraft will go into the small stands hence the small aircraft stands are of no use so as soon as as soon as i have removed the small stands um, we have a good reason to cancel the contract with the generic airlines and then it will be only real life airlines coming into the airport when we have done that then it is actually time to expand on terminal one um, i have found a little bit of space here on the map there's not much left but that is one thing i can do i think we will have space for somewhere between six and eight more medium stands 
but um, yeah we will see that in one of the future episodes of airport ceo um, but for now of course we just focus on the first preparations for the expansion and a little bit of refurbishment of terminal one all right so while our construction workers now are busy over at terminal one there's one last thing i want to do here over at terminal two in today's episode um, and it's actually something that we don't really need at the moment but it would be nice to have for the future in case we figure out we can do anything more here at terminal two i'm not sure that would be possible but if we want to then we are prepared for it and what I want to do is basically have a second entrance for people after security. So what I want to do is actually to build a secondary security check um, from where they then can get up to the first floor. And that would be behind this um, shop we have here, um, or food room, I think it's called in the game. And um, so I will, I will not open it up for the public, we will construct it all it won't be open for the public if we ever decide to use it then we can remove this wall and make a footpath through the shop leave the shop but just make a footpath through so that the people can actually arrive we also have the um, um the good thing that people will have to walk through the food room might tempt them to buy something in any case then we would have um, security checks here and then have escalators going upstairs for that of course we also need to extend the upstairs a little bit they will basically come in in a little bit of an awkward place um, but we will build it so that we um, basically just need to remove a few walls and then people would have access to the first floor one of the things we would remove is actually the um, one of the bathrooms here but we will build um, a replacement bathroom and we already have that in place and this is all just in case we want to use it at some point so it will be a hidden section of the airport which is only accessible for staff at the moment but at some point uh, could become accessible for passengers if we should need it so one last issue that i have detected here is actually de-icing um, we seem not to have enough de-icing pads i thought three would be more than enough but apparently it's not so we will have to add more of those that is a thing we will be focusing on in the next episode of airport ceo i'm not quite sure about the game logic here because i would think or i would have thought that if an aircraft for example comes from terminal 2 it would go to the de-icing pads on the same side of the runway but sometimes they do cross over and it seems to be a little bit at random um but yeah anyway we will add more de-icing pads in the next episode now with that we have actually reached the end of this video we have done a lot of things we have opened the terminal we have started refurbishing of terminal one we have uh, built a secret pathway for terminal two so yeah if you have enjoyed the video don't forget to smash the like button that really helps us out if you're new around here why not hit subscribe that would be absolutely awesome and with that i'd like to say thank you very much for watching hope to see you soon again i'm checking out and bye